Welcome back to Channel 17. Um, we have a treat here today. Um, we've had Mike Blair, Mall Punk, join us when we found him after seeing the uh, video clip and seeing that there was a lot of interest in that. And today, um, Mike was recently contacted by... Michelle. Michelle, awesome. And Mike, I just want to talk to you because you're wearing the Bernie shirt. And you've now started a Twitter feed called Mall Punk. <laughs> right. <laughs> Were you involved in the campaign? Oh, I currently Did... am volunteering. Yeah. I'm a volunteer texter from home. Yeah. So I'm doing what I can. Yeah, and so were you already involved in the campaign before you did the interview here? I wasn't before I did the interview. Yeah. But then I also didn't know that you could actually just volunteer from home. Yeah. Which makes a huge difference. Yeah. And, you know, you're able to connect with a lot of people, and there's been a lot of people who have said, oh, I can volunteer from home. Yeah. <laughs> so it's growing. Cool. And so let's welcome Michelle. We have Michelle here on Skype. Um, so hi, Michelle. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, where are you right now? Uh, Kingman, Arizona. Wow, and tell us like how did you figure, how did you, how did we find you or how did you find us? Well, it was kind of interesting. Out of the blue, somebody sent me a message via Facebook Messenger and I didn't even know who sent me the video, quite frankly, because you know, people send <laughs> You know, th their profiles don't often have their actual name or sometimes don't have their actual name. So I had no idea. It was just some random weird name on there. Sent me this video. So I clicked on it and was like, oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> so young. Oh, my gosh. I forgot and I did the interview. Honestly, it was so long ago. And... That um, you know made me think. Oh my gosh, I need to get a hold of Mike. This is this is awesome. I, and it was a lot easier for me to find Mike because, well, he stayed in Vermont, and I knew he had stayed in Vermont. And well, you know, his name didn't change when he got married. Yeah, I that's did, right. So yeah, it was a little harder to find. Yeah. So for those folks who are tuning into this um, completely new, uh, the video clip that we're talking about is this video clip you see a still of it and we'll watch it in a few minutes um bernie sanders was mayor of burlington starting in 1981 and uh, one of the things that he did during his tenure was a series called bernie speaks with the community and there are 52 episodes in our archives of bernie um, in this case he was walking through the downtown mall talking to people and he ran into mike and michelle at the time and spoke with them about um, their interests in the world. Um, and um, it caught the interest and imagination of folks who watched it. Also part of that video series are um, him talking to a group of kids at Franklin Square, talking to Brent Sclafani's class, the third grade class at um, then Barnes uh, Elementary School. Um, a whole series he really uh, used um, the Community Access Center, which is CCTV, which is where we are located as a way of engaging with people. The community. The community. Um, so let's take a look at that clip now, Michael, if you want to roll that for us. We're now talking to two young people from South Burlington. Burlington. All right, one from Burlington. What is your name? Michelle. Michelle, and your name is? Mike Blair. And Mike, you're from South, South Burlington. Burlington. Michelle, you're from Burlington. Well, let me start off by saying it's an interesting hairdo. Thank you. Lipstick, lipstick is also very interesting. Col the color screen will focus in on it. It seems to be a black. Is that right? All right. So let me ask you the obvious question. All right. Mm -hmm. What does your dress mean? What does it say? Or does it doesn't mean anything? Or what? Um, it's just basically saying to heck with society, to heck with law and order. Well, it's not so much law and order. But You're saying to the mayor to heck with law and order? Um, it's just basically saying that you can do whatever you want to do and it doesn't matter. I can be punk rock if you want to say. It, I don't like the way society's run. Okay, well let's... It's a cop out. Everybody's plastic. All right, and, and 
All right, talk about that. What, don't, what, what specifically? What are the aspects of that society that you don't like? How would you like to see it changed? People are not open-minded enough. They think that in order to be stable in society, you have to have money, you have to live in a suburb, you have to do the set things, such as have so many people over for dinner a night, a week, or you're not socially acceptable, you got to dress a certain way to be socially acceptable. And I don't believe in having to belong to anything to be a person. I can do basically what I, what I want with my appearance, with my attitude, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, well, that's a good statement. I appreciate that. And would you like to add to that? Well, about the dress, it's just, it's for, it, it shows the way you feel, you know? Like, people wear black because they're not feeling too good about what's going on around them. Like, some of the stuff that goes on in the society, you know, it's basically baloney. And, like, people say that the democracy is so truly free. And, I mean, that's fine, but the, the way we're living in this democracy isn't a true democracy and like to they everybody's always complaining about depression and such well that's going to happen in the democracy it's natural because if you have a democracy there's going to be capitalists and like I, I guess that I mean they shouldn't be complaining because that's what they asked for you know what kind of what kind of society would you like to see? Um, well, I'm kind of an anarchist, but communism doesn't bother me like a true communism where it just goes to like no freedom of enterprise because then everybody gets a chance to, to live and be safe, you know? But when it goes as far as cutting down people's freedom of speech, you know, that's not, that's not, I don't feel that's right. The distinguishing between what you mean as true communism as opposed right. to what exists, say, in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Yeah, Marx's idea of um, communism was a lot different than what they have it now. I'm kind of an anarchist, too, but I don't believe in total anarchy because then we're just going to kill ourselves. I just don't like the way it's run now. How do you feel society can be changed? Well, if we could go into the archives and see what the government's really been doing for the past, I don't know, how long many years, then we'd all be pretty appalled and sickened by it. Because we think we're so free, we think we're so democratic, everybody has a say. We're just as imperialistic as the Soviets are, if not more. We're the ones that go into the other countries and we start wars. What really is, scares me is that we've never had a war in our own country. We don't know what it's like. We push our luck. Maybe one day we will get invaded, and then maybe we'll know what it's like. Okay. Also. Um, with the uh, communism and democracy, like one government always makes the makes the people in its country feel that the other government's trying to impose on them. Well, that's not really true. They just want to be the way they want to be, and we should just want to stay the way we want to, and not try and spread our beliefs onto someone else. Okay. So what did you guys think of your own high school education? Um, the education itself was good. Um, I'm going to college now, which is also good. What college are you going to? Um, Community College, Vermont. Mm -hmm. But the environment is not the best. A lot of blackballing goes on. If you do one thing wrong, well then th you're considered throughout the whole year, throughout your whole stay there as a bad person. I don't know. It's, it's odd. And if, if you dress radically, then you're you dress radically, right? <laughs> yeah. Can we say that? Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair statement. If, if you don't dress like everybody else, then they automatically think there's something, yeah, wrong, something with wrong with you. Also, they send you away. Yeah. And with school, like the education part is fine, but they do so much programming to everybody to make them feel like teachers will poke fun at me a lot, you know. Um, I'm not going to mention any names because they probably wouldn't be too pleased if they heard about that. But they specifically point out at me that like I'm trying to ruin their government. I don't care what they do. I just want to live the way I want to live, you know? Okay, well thank you very much for your 
forthright views. Okay, see ya. Thank you. Okay, I was the next person that. We so Michelle, Mike, what do you? What are your reactions to that? Watching it. Well, I'm still at. If we had known then what we know now, we would have just said actually what Bernie's saying. <laughs> <laughs> would have been a short interview. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. What is your, like when you listen to that? Um, you know, you got to live in the suburbs. You got to dress a certain way. You got to all have dinner at a certain time. How have your, how has your life shaped since those, since you were having those thoughts? Well, I spent uh, 30 years pursuing the career of my own cho choosing and my own making. Um, I owned a tattoo shop for 20 years. And, uh, you know, I, I refuse to, I refuse to define myself in other people's eyes. You know, I, I get to be proud of who I wake up and see in the mirror every day. I get to be proud that everything that I own and everything that I do to provide for my family, I did on my own terms. And you really can't ask for anything better out of life. But at the same time, you can't just opt out of life altogether, you know. And for a while I tried to because it's, if you can't wake up the nation around you, you can't, you can't see any change. You can't affect any change in the world around you. So, you know, you, you can, you can, you can put your head in the sand and you can opt out and do what you want for your own family and that's fine. But I, I got tired of putting my head in the sand and, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to make a difference. I've done, you know, we spent most of the 20 years in our shop doing fundraisers to help people when their houses went upside down, when the housing bubble just exploded. Um, and, and, you know, we're not talking about irresponsible people. We're talking about people that, you know, work hard every day. They do the expected thing. They pay their taxes. They are a productive member of society, and they're still losing their home over, you know, econ economic stuff beyond their making, beyond their repair. Yeah. And so we, we tried to do our best in every way that we can. And, you know, hopefully now we've got uh, someone running that actually does care what the little man thinks, needs, wants. Hopefully we can affect larger change than just helping the people in your very small community. So at that time, um, well, I think before we didn't we talked about you you didn't know that you were um, talking to the mayor, right? No. Nope. And <laughs> how old are you in that clip? Oh, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. So you were already going to CCV. You'd already gotten out of the yeah, high school into system UVA. and into the and into CCV. Um, what is what what are you thinking when you look back at her now and now you're thinking about Bernie running for president what how what do you think what does it make you feel like well again it just it 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 shows that he really does care i mean i like i said i i had forgotten i'd done this interview i'd forgotten that it existed until it was sent to me uh but you know, I, as soon as I saw it and started watching it, it triggered the memory and was like, oh, my gosh, that's right. This, <laughs> this is amazing. He really does. See, and I was telling all my friends, see, he really does care. He really does want. And even all the way 32 years ago, he cares. Mm -hmm. He wants to make sure that he's talking to everybody. And it wasn't just us. There were a lot of other people spoken to, so he wants to get everybody's story and try to do what's right for 
everybody. So it really, I, I think of it as, you know, I really haven't changed much other than I'm a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my opinions are pretty much the same. I, you know, probably a little less naive, uh, a little more well-rounded in my, you know, worldview. But uh, it's not a whole lot different. So not all 17-year-olds, though, are thinking the way that you were thinking at that time. What brought you to those views at 17, or you, Mike? What brought you to those views? Was it the culture of, like, the clothes, or was it the ideas first? I think it was the ideas first. I think the clothes kind of caught up to it, and, you know, just us not being necessarily happy with what we see going on and what we know the government's doing. And... Uh, you know, it's a way to stand out and not be just part of the status quo. And you are, you were good buds at that time. Yeah, we met. Uh, we met uh, playing in the Vermont Youth Orchestra. <laughs> we were both bass players. <laughs> yeah, we both played bass in the Vermont Youth Orchestra. <laughs> very, very, and that's a pretty um, uh, up. That's a very upright, upstanding organization. Not a lot of punks in the Vermont Youth Orchestra. Yeah, Carolyn oh, yeah. Long took a little issue with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and I would say that also music in general, I think, took a big, well, had a big role in what our thought process was because a lot of what we were listening to had a lot of political messaging in it. Yeah. And also, as we all know, Bernie started the mayor's youth office. Yeah. 242 Maine, yeah. which we spent a lot of time at. I was at. working at the mayor's youth office at the time. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, um, and and this clip got f picked up and shared by the Dead Kennedys. Yeah, the Dead Kennedys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome, <laughs> which we were listening to back then. Yeah. So that's just simply amazing. Do you still listen to the Dead Kennedys now? Yeah, from time oh, to time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You got a favorite Dead Kennedys song? Holiday in Cambodia. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the only, you know, I, I actually heard a version of Holiday in Cambodia as done by Richard Cheese. He's a lounge act. Oh, okay. Music and lounge version. And he does it like an actual Christmas song. It oh, is my God. Hilarious. I'm going to have to hear that. <laughs> you absolutely must. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So do you have, when you got in touch with each other after all these years, did you, do you have things that you needed to catch up on? Well, we, so were you campaigning for Bernie also? Um, you were campaigning for Bernie. Right. It sounds like, Michelle, you were supporting Bernie. Well, we've Absolutely. both been Bernie supporters, but that was, we were talking back and forth about the video clip, and then I just had to ask. Are you a Bernie supporter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I couldn't have been more happy to see that both mall punks Support Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, are there things that you want to sh to share or ask of one another after all these years? I don't know. You know, it's funny because we talk a little bit. We see what we said back then, and we're still on the same page. Yeah. You know, it's about people and people taking care of people, not people doing things yep. to harm people and take things away from people, but to live together as a good, strong society. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I... Bones, you gotta pick them up. Yeah. And have you, what have you thought about the, the um, response to this clip? People really, you know, this DJ, <laughs> they, People, a million or more people have watched the clip of Bernie interviewing yeah. you two in the mall. And... It's very surreal. <laughs> well, and the amazing thing is, is that it was brought out and put out there as something to try and hurt Bernie. You oh, know? absolutely. And they're trying to spin this narrative like, oh, that's just crazy. What mayor talks to the people? Yeah. Who would ever do that? Well, he got those videos got my mom to vote for Bernie. Fantastic. She was not a Bernie That's supporter. Funny, yeah. She yeah, is now. Interesting. Just for that reason. He I talks to the people. I one of the comments that was accusing this as a, a canned interview because no punks they ever knew were uh, eloquent and didn't cuss every other word. And I'm like, you know, I just answered them back. I'm like, you know, I... I can uh, I can 
cussed like a duck or whatever, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, they have no idea about her. You don't... You, you, can't, <laughs> you can't cuss on TV, I told him. I was like, we knew that. We're not stupid. If you want to be heard <laughs> and have your interview aired, you have to... Be eloquent. You have to speak correctly. Use your lexicon. There are other words to use. So one of the one of the things um, in in looking at some of the comments, which is a dangerous place to tread in the world, <laughs> I have come to realize. Um, is, uh, you know, sort of the obvious question, anarchists supporting a presidential candidate? Talk about that a well, little bit. What I said in the original video is I'm not a true anarchist because I don't support that because we really would kill ourselves. Human beings can be very ugly and without some sort of back, you know, law and order, <laughs> we, <laughs> we really will kill ourselves. Yeah, and I think the statement was more about the being against thing. the government that we have than actually a full understanding of what things, I mean, it was 16, <laughs> what anarchy would actually be inviting. So, yeah. 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 So that's interesting. But there is there something different about Bernie in particular or his candidacy over other candidates? And I'm, you know, I'm not talking about but just, is there something particular about Bernie? Well, yeah, it's the whole concept of everything he wants to do is actually for the people. So the society is working to sustain itself as opposed to sustaining, you know, the military industrial complex or Amazon, you know, these massive corporations. I mean, we pave the roads for Amazon to make their deliveries and they don't pay taxes. Yeah. It's not right. Okay. I don't need to support them, you know. I'd like to take care of my friends, my family, my neighbors and my fellow countrymen rather than Jeff Bezos. Any thoughts on that, Michelle? Yeah, honestly, uh, he's the only politician I've ever supported because he's the only one that's not strictly worried about lining their own pockets. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. You're out there in Arizona enjoying the sun just as we're you know, just past Super Tuesday and town meeting, <laughs> the sun is starting to come up here, it's starting to get warm. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And for tracking each other snow. down. Say that again. I don't miss the snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hate the snow. <laughs> and um, what will you be doing after November 2020, regardless of who gets into office? Where do you think you're going to be? I, I would prefer to continue doing the same things that we've been doing. We do fundraisers for the Boys and Girls Club. We do fundraisers for, you know, the community at large, just trying to help out our neighbors. More of a grassroots thing. Great. So anything else that you want to um, share with the viewers about this? Well, I think one of the other noteworthy points is that at the end of the video, one of our friends gets up and walks off with us, who was Gary Lane, who ended up a few years back having a day in Burlington dedicated to him. <laughs> oh, like by the city council? Yeah, something. I can't remember. So Gary Lane. Yeah, Gary who's, Lane. Michelle, who's Gary Lane? Oh, probably the most knowledgeable person in the entire world about <laughs> music. I, I don't think anybody, anybody owns more records than Gary Lane. I don't think anybody's been to more concerts than Gary Lane. I agree. He was <laughs> the most amazing human being, sweetest, nicest, kindest, and most painfully shy person. <laughs> and that's why he was standing up against the wall and not oh, part of the interview. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think he could have put a gun to his head to make him get in front of that camera. <laughs> Do you remember what you said to him when you went? What do you think you said as you went over to him after the interview? Um, I don't know. I guess we probably were just like, can you believe that just happened? Uh huh. Yeah. Who, who the heck was that? Who anyway? was that guy? <laughs> because you didn't even know it was the mayor then. He didn't tell you. He I wasn't like, I'm the mayor of Burlington. Here, let me Yeah, not until you. we were in the middle of the interview. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I didn't live in Burlington, so I definitely had no idea who the yeah. mayor of Burlington was. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And thanks for watching. Thanks.
And if you haven't, check out the other Bernie Speaks, um, part of the Bernie Speaks series, um, and stay tuned for more community programming here on Town Meeting Television.